Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. What's up guys, Dave here from Metal Epidemic, back with another album review and for this review, Duncan Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from Portuguese hardcore band Pledge. The band's new album Haunted Visions will be released on May 28th via Raging Planet Records. So uh, these guys have been active since around 2018 and have released one EP to date. Uh, in December 2019, the Pledge hit the studio to record their debut full-length album Haunted Visions. The album was recorded, mixed and mastered by Andre Concalves at Adrift Studio in Viana do Castelo and was initially planned for release in 2020 but due to the pandemic had to be postponed along with a, a number of confirmed shows. Um, so now that the world is gradually returning to normal, the time has come for Pledge to finally unleash their debut album. So uh, gentlemen, um, I had never heard of this band before, Pledge. Uh, completely new one on me but since they've only been on the go since 2018 that's not a, a kind of real surprise really um i suppose for me that the very the kind of first thing um that kind of appealed to me about this album was the the overall kind of sound of the recording um it's, it's an album that sounds very very natural it feels like they've kind of just gone into a room and kind of let rip for 35 minutes um they've they've really managed to capture that band type feel and capture the intensity of the music uh, it sounds very organic um, and musically although they are a, like a hardcore band um they definitely don't tend to sit solely within that wheelhouse for the entire album there's lots of different textures and styles being blended into their sound uh, beginning with a very kind of 80s synth laden kind of retro vibe on that intro track uh, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, but when the band kind of get down to business on Sudden Urge, it's, it's like a mix of hardcore, post-hardcore, a bit of noise rock. Um, there's some little kind of elements of post-rock in there as well at times too. Um, it's, it's it's quite a kind of dissonant and kind of jagged kind of sound in a lot of the, of the riffs. Um, but vocalist uh, Sophia switches between these kind of blood curdling screams and uh, also some kind of clean melodies as well which reminded me of a band from way way back in the day called uh, Defenestration, I don't know if you remember them. Yeah, check out um, pink and blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, just the, the, the cleans on that just made me think of that for some reason, there was some kind of similarities in their kind of vocal tone but um, what, I, what I did like about this though was although hardcore can be quite a repetitive and kind of predictable genre um, Pledge don't tend to stick to a lot of the usual cliches of the genre. Um, I felt this was more a kind of kind of birds in a row or the tidal sleep type sound rather than like a like a hate breed or a mad ball type hardcore. Um, and you can hear that from the very first track. Uh, they like to play with a lot of kind of different tempos and rhythms um, just to keep it from becoming too much of the same thing. Uh, and musically, there, there's quite a lot of nice changes and dynamics and varied textures. Um, it, it keeps a lot of the same kind of core elements uh, throughout the, the tracks on the album, but I liked when they did play with those other styles on this. Um, Wrong Planet Syndrome, uh, for example, um, I really liked when they, they kind of brought back that synthy sound from the intro track and kind of merged it in with this one, and then they kind of exper experimented sorry, with some of the more melodic kind of tones uh, riff-wise on it. Uh, which was a really nice idea because it kind of sits in the middle of the album uh, and it kind of works as a kind of little break up on the album, a little kind of breather. Um, Despite Clarity was another one, another track that they've kind of opted for almost like, it kind of almost felt a little bit more kind of indie in places and in, in some of the guitar work. Um, but Sophia's kind of kind of scathing vocal attack gives it still that kind of streak of kind of vitriol. Um, my favourite track was probably uh, We All Die Alone. Um, I, I love the little kind of vocal hook from uh, Sophia on that track, it definitely stuck in my head more than the others did. Um, and I, I kind of love to hear them kind of expand and explore more of those kind of melodic, kind of catchy vocal lines because it's clear that they have the potential to do it um, and I thought it really worked, uh, really worked well on that track. Um, 
I suppose, although I compared like Pledge to bands like Birds in the Row or The Tidal Sleep, I, I don't necessarily think they are at the kind of high heights of those bands just yet. I think uh, they've only been active since 2018, as I mentioned, um, and you can hear some of that in the execution of some of the tracks. Um, but I think, to be honest, I think it just comes down to experience. Um, but that being said, they've come on leaps and bounds uh, since their last EP, uh, Resilience. You can hear how much more, how much tighter, and how more kind of developed their sound is in comparison to that EP. Um, and I imagine, like in another year or two, I think their sound will be even better. So I'm excited to hear where they go from here. But um, I thought it was a pretty good debut, to be honest. Um, I was quite impressed. I'd never heard of them before, but I, I definitely dug a lot of what they were doing on this one. Uh, Duncan, what did you make of Pledge? Well, I'll be honest, like, within the first three songs, I was kind of pissed off with this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to swing around to, to why. Okay. I, in principle, like intro tracks, right? I, uh -huh. I, I understand that bands do them. Um, I have used them before in the past. You just show a wee intro in there, a little, taste, uh -huh. a little teaser to something that's going to happen. Um, what I... What I get confused about is the, the kind of ponchon for metal bands to like experiment with elements that are completely not in their sound which is what mm -hmm. the opening track is the opening track invisible fires is a synth wave track retro yeah. 80s synth wave all mm -hmm. electronica synths and all the rest and kind of caught me off guard when it when i heard it i was like yeah. oh right fuck what, what, what we're getting here and then what we got after that was nothing like that at all for yeah. a good few tracks. And like to me, I, I dislike that quite a bit because I'm like, you've shortchanged me a song of you guys doing what you do for something that I don't know if you wrote it. I don't know if it's someone fucking around in the studio playing you know bits and bobs on a keyboard. However, as you mentioned, they bring it back. They bring it back mm -hmm. later on in a really un unexpected way. So much so yeah. that it worked really well on that song, and in retrospect, intro's fine now. See, yeah. like, see if that had been the only bit, I would have been fucking furious, right? Because, <laughs> like I say, it's a it's a gimmick that does nothing. It's a gimmick. Yeah. It's a track that doesn't sound like your band, but they brought it back in later on. Even like how they use the instead of doing the fade out that Kyle hates, they distorted everything to fuck except the vocals on the very last track League Now mm -hmm. almost making it sound discordant and dare I say a little bit electronic a little bit glitchy a little bit that, so what kind of mm. book ended with really interesting elements yeah I think personally the vocals are too low in the mix that's my biggest mm. complaint is that everything else like sounds like actually you probably hit the nail on the head any practice room that you ever go into anywhere in the world the vocalist is never the loudest person in there it's usually the yep. quietest um, and it does have that kind of feel she's got a great tone like see your mm. screaming tone I, I'm glad you mentioned Defenestration I, I was thinking in the back of my head I was thinking of bands from like the early 2000s because um, yeah. that's when the we're ha we had a small spat of female led metal bands back then mm. and she definitely has that kind of simmed um, yeah. I like that also like a clean tone I think a clean tone is unique enough in that genre to make her stand out she doesn't hit the notes in the range that she has in line with what a lot of female vocalists in a kind of kind of hardcore sort of world sound like mm. interestingly enough you mentioned all those bands this is not the only time I'm going to mention this band tonight um, so you'll need to piece it up with other review that drops at some point <laughs> Will Haven there's segments right. in here that have like bit kind of early kind of 2000 2001 Will Haven to them, uh, which I really liked, and it's just it, it was some of the riffs with some of the stuff that was going on in the background that was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I love the the fact that they will do stuff like you were mentioning with Ron Planet Syndrome, where they start experimenting and do some other, but they also have songs that are straight down the middle. Yardbird is maybe the most right down the middle. Here's a track, it's two and a half minutes long, no fucking thrills, she's screaming, we're playing guitars, he's doing <laughs> the drums, that cunt's on bass, boom. It's, it like totally is just just it's straight to the point. And the fact that it comes before a track that then experiments, I really like that because mm. it's you're, they're giving you the short thing to grab your attention in and then you get a, a longer drawn out track. Um, it's a really interesting album. I think, kind of front to back, there's nothing here that is 
remarkable. But mm-hmm. what I like about them is the they clearly have a grasp on exactly how they want to deliver their music. I just I and actually maybe slightly against what you were saying, I think there's probably just enough melody on here for the length of the album. I think if the album mm-hmm. was going to be longer, I would have liked to, you know some more tracks. Certainly, with yeah, me no, I, I think there was enough melody. I just I, I liked the catchiness of it on that track. Yeah, I think they could oh, do I, more of that. Yeah, she's she's she got away with it, but it's not just how she's singing; it's what the guitars are doing as well. Well, the mm-hmm. guitars are almost not doing what they're doing elsewhere, and by giving her the opportunity to write those hooks over them by playing the yeah, chords yeah. the way they are, um, yeah. and it's just a, an extra, like you see, it's just a, and you, it's a, it's not a blink and you miss it bit, but it's like it appears yeah. in that one song, catches you off guard, and then they. Don't don't return to it, um, mm-hmm. but there, all the elements are there. Like the, the the building blocks of a really really interesting modern hardcore band are here for sure. Um, I think there's enough good on this album to make me definitely want to check out anything they release again. Like I say, mm-hmm. my only complaint, my only complaint overall, I'd have the vocals up in that mix because it, it felt at times like she's so fucking angry and she's so screamy, yet. She sounds like she's at the back of the room, and the band sound like they're in front of me. Um, but that was about it. Yeah, I had, I had a good time with this one. Cool, nice one. And Kyle, our resident non-hardcore listener. <laughs> no, I never would have pegged this band as a hardcore band. Oh really? Like no, I listened to it, hadn't not read the thing. I usually tend to read it a few tracks in, just mm. to see if my suspicions are correct. And this time I was like, hardcore, really? Especially after that synth intro, <laughs> you don't tend to hear that on hardcore bands. And I got yeah. the same feeling as Duncan. I was fucking annoyed that they did this synth stuff. I even wrote down synth work. It's promising, question mark. And then underneath it, nope. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they did the one track, and then it came in a little bit later, and that was it. And I'm like, well, you've clearly got a talented synth person here. Use them. That worked really well. What are you doing with this other bullshit? I don't know. <laughs> I agree. The, the vocal was... There's too much reverb on it, and... Uh, it was too low in the mix. I think the whole production was kind of lacking, to be honest. It was like, like you said, it just sounded like a band in a room, but not in a good way hmm. for me. It's just like, right. mm, yeah, you can record a band in a room, but they each need their own mic, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really sound. I don't know. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something was just not quite. I mean, there's overproduction and then there's underproduction too, and I think this was a little bit underproduced. I don't know if they did it themselves or whatever, but it was just something was off and it kept bugging me and I just couldn't put my finger on it and it distracted me the whole way through. Um, a lot of the songs they didn't really stand out from each other for me as well, except for that one with the synth, which went back mm. to the which went back to the intro. But other than that, it was like, yeah, I don't know. This one didn't really grab me as much as other stuff has before. So even though I listened to it a few times, it's still just like I can't remember any of the songs or any hooks. Mm. It just it just the synth stuff because it stood stands out so much since they only did it twice on the album, yeah. and I think if they lent into those things more, they'd be way more unique. But but I didn't know that they clearly can play their instruments. They're not a bunch of amateurs and they're not sat there just messing around. They know what they're doing. They know, and I think they just need to work on the sound a bit. I think they they've only been together two or three years, so I think they need to just get back in the practice room and work on what makes them them. I don't mm-hmm. know if they're trying to pr- copy someone they've heard or anything like that, but I mean, it just didn't really grab me at all. That's all I'm gonna say. It was, it was, it was fine. It's not a terrible album. I just don't think it's great either. Mm-hmm. So that's what I came away from it. I probably won't go back to it any time in the future, but I will be willing, not willing, but I definitely will check out what they do in the future, <laughs> especially if okay. Dave sends it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so um, ratings for um, Haunted Visions by Pledge. Um, I, I think I can definitely hear progression from that last EP. I went back and listened to, to Resilience once I listened to the album, just to hear, you know, had there been much change. But And you can hear you can hear the tightness is, is definitely better on, on this album. Um, I, liked, I liked the ideas with the synth, and I liked that kind of catchy melody they had on We Die Alone. I'd like to hear a bit more of that. Um, and I think I think they just need to keep working on their sound, just kind of kind of honing that sound a bit more. Um, at the moment, I think um, this is probably a three point five for me. Um, I could see myself going back to it, checking it out. It's got it's, there's definitely something to it that appeals to me. So um, I'm keen to see uh, where they go next. So three point five out of five for me, uh, Duncan. I'm with you 100. percent In fact, I'm pretty much with everything you just said there. Yeah, three point oh. five. I think there's plenty of room for growth and I think they have it in them to do that. So I'm yeah. very much looking forward 
to what they come away with next. Excellent. And Kyle? Okay. I think I'm going to go with three out of five. I, they've got a lot of room to grow, and I, I am looking forward to what they do in the future. So. Mm-hmm. But this one was just like, meh, to me. So. Okay. Okay. No props. Uh, this one drops on uh, May 28th on Raging Planet Records. Um, if you want to check the band out, it is facebook.com forward slash pledge band official. I'll put a little link below to their Facebook and to their Bandcamp page so you can check out the album. Um, let us know what you think. If you've heard any of the tracks um, or once you've heard the album, let us know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Glad to hear them. Um, that is the review. Thanks for checking it out. Much appreciated. Uh, we'll be back with another review very soon, but until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. See you.